how you doing today? Today we're going to do a brake job on a 2000 Toyota Avalon. It's a pretty basic, straightforward car, very, very similar to everything you're going to see on Toyotas and many, many other brands too. Um, we've got a little bit of an issue with this car. Coming off the highway, you tend to feel the pedal vibrate a little bit as you're slowing down. A um, little bit of grinding noise, ever so slight, maybe the early indicators of a worn out brake pad. In either case, it justifies taking a look at what's going on here. If you turn your focus onto this uh, front brake, we've got the wheel off, obviously. And I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the, on the video, but can you see the kind of splotches all the way around the brake rotor? Okay. These are uh, what are often referred to as hot spots. Um, it's uh, caused by overheating. Certain parts of the metal get hardened and the metal around it wears a little faster. So you end up with little bumps all over the rotor, which is what you're feeling um, when you're coming off the highway. Uh, often uh, it's referred to as the brake rotors warping, although technically that may not be the case. It's just that they are not worn evenly. And it, it, although it's not unsafe, it's certainly a frustrating feeling when you come off the highway and the car starts shaking like that. So we're going to replace these rotors. The, the cost of machining and the, versus the cost of new ones, it's almost the same price. And really, once you get these hot spots in the rotors, there's no getting rid of it. Machining will eliminate the problem for a while, but it'll come back because the problem's right in the metal. Better off just to toss them off and replace them. Also, when you machine rotors, you make them thinner with less metal there to dissipate the heat. They're more inclined to overheat again. So do it once, do it right, replace the rotors. Okay, so we've got the key in the ignition so that the steering wheel is free to turn. We're going to turn it outwards so that you can see the brake caliper. We've got two bolts here to remove the brake caliper. Okay, they're 14 millimeter. We're just going to crack them loose. Okay, they're nice and free, which is good. Don't want to have to fight with them. If you have the luxury of an air ratchet as I do, it makes your life a little easier, but a good old hand ratchet will do the trick too. Okay, so there we go. There's our two retaining bolts for the caliper. I just set them aside. Okay, the caliper itself will now slide off. Usually it comes fairly easily. This one's obviously putting up a bit of a battle. So let's see if we can't persuade it to come off. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now the caliper is fairly heavy, and if you just let it dangle from the hose, you'll you'll pinch the hose there, and inside that rubber is a metal lining, and you'll kink it. So you should never really let the calipers just hang. Instead, get yourself a piece of heavy gauge wire. Create a hook and just hang them up off the coil spring or any such place that prevents them from dangling. Okay. Next we're going to remove our brake pads and as I suspected they're very very thin, almost non-existent. Okay, so those are finished. All right. Couldn't have gone another week with those. Done deal. Next we're going to take off this bracket that holds the caliper. 17 millimeter bolts in this case. One, two. Okay, they're just literally finger tight now once you snap them loose. This car has had good maintenance in the past, so the parts are coming off fairly simply. Okay, and there is our bracket. We'll set that aside along with its two retaining bolts. And now the brake rotor, which just slides off like that when everything works the way it's supposed to. Okay, again, now you can maybe see it a little better. You can see that the inner edge of the rotor has been scraped, it's been metal to metal. And although that you probably could salvage this rotor by machining it, better just to replace it. That one has seen better days. Now, next thing I want to turn your attention to, when you uh, go to put your new rotor on, you'll often find 
this surface here of the brake hub is rusted and when metal rusts it expands and with the metal expanding you're going to get the rotor the rotor won't be able to sit exactly true and square on that hub it'll be off a little bit or as you tighten it it'll start to warp a little bit okay so what you want is to clean any rust that's on that surface you want to clean it away just with with some sandpaper with a file make sure that it's a nice clean true surface now again the car's had good maintenance it's been cleaned in the past and a little bit of anti-seize grease has been applied on all the spots before as a rust preventative and lo and behold we had no issues getting that rotor off and it's nice and clean for the installation of the new one okay you can check out the backing plate here this is not really a back plate really it's just a dust shield its job is exactly as its name says is, is to prevent the dust from flying all over the place whenever you brake the brake dust comes off that stops it from flying all over the place and making a real mess these often rust in these uh, areas where we are up here in Canada. We get lots of salt in the road. These get rusted away and they need to be replaced. Front ones are typically quite cheap, 20, 30 bucks. It's not unusual. Uh, the rear ones on this car, it has disc brakes as well. And it's got a, kind of a disc and a parking brake drum combination. And the dust shield is combined with the backing plate and it's over $270. Um, the heavy gauge part of it tends to last a long time. It's the thin part that rusts away. So uh, given that the car is 15 years old, I don't really want to spend nearly five, well, you know, over $500 on two dust shields in the back. So I'm going to make my own light gauge shields to keep the dust away. But that's another day's project. So back to today's. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is clean things up. There is invariably going to be dust on there. Okay. If it's caked on, it's a steel brush. Okay. Clean it up. Okay, again, this one is pretty darn clean. You never know that car is 15 years old, would you? Brake cleaner, six or, seven, six or seven bucks usually. A little more expensive in Canada than it is in the US. Wash it off. It's an alcohol based cleaner. It will evaporate. We'll just get all that dust and old grease and stuff off of there. we're starting with a nice clean surface okay so we got our new brake rotor you notice that when they package them they've wrapped them in plastic most of the time that's to keep moisture away from them so that they can't rust they should have always been stored flat like that never on their edge apparently that causes warpage although I can't speak with authority on that there's often a oily coating on them which is part of the machining process and a preserving oil that they leave on the rotors so that while they're in storage they don't rust you need to get rid of that so get your brake cleaner out again and take special care to wash the braking surface especially the part where the pads actually show the pa actually touch bigger pardon okay let's get all that lube there likewise here if you're so inclined that you want to paint your brake rotors to make them look nice and fancy, this will be the time to do it. Okay, obviously don't paint the braking surface. Okay, so we'll just let that drip dry. Okay, and while that's drip drying, we'll get the next part ready. Now notice I'm going to take extra care the whole time I'm handling these to handle it by the edge, not by the surface where you touch, uh, where the brake pads touch rather. If you get your greasy paws on there, make sure you wash it off because the oil will cause those hot spots that we were talking about earlier and then you'll have the pulsation problem coming back in no time. So be very, very careful that you keep them nice and clean. Okay, so now we're going to turn our attention while that's drying over to the bracket that's going to hold our caliper. So oftentimes when you buy your new brake pads, they'll come with clips, these ones new ones use them if they come with it okay this kit did not come with it so we're gonna have to reuse the old ones so I'm just gonna take them out for a moment the caliper itself is obviously dusty and dirty okay so take out our steel brush clean away the dirt all right good enough okay now there's a couple things I want to draw your attention to here this bracket the brake pads are going to be sitting in that slot okay and they need to be able to move freely 
These clips go in between the pad and the actual bracket to facilitate that, to make them move nice and freely. But like everything else as a car ages, the clips get dirty, they get corroded, and underneath the clips you get rust. Okay, so again, rust or metal expands when it gets, when it gets rusted, and as that metal is expanding, it's going to start putting pressure on the pads, pinching the pads a little bit so they can't move freely. So just with a small file, just get rid of that surface rust. Oftentimes it'll be far worse than this, because, but again, this car has been well maintained, so there's not a whole lot on there. But you want to get rid of any rust underneath where that clip is going to go. Okay. I'll be honest, in all my years of swinging wrenches, I have not seen a mechanic other than myself do this. I guess they're just interested in slapping them together and getting them out. I hope that there's more out there. It's a very basic two-minute job that'll save your customers future grief. Okay. The truth of the matter is if you don't do this, the customer will never know. All he'll know is that his brakes wore out prematurely. And he probably got lousy gas mileage for the last few months before they wore out. This one you can see has got a fair bit of rust built on it. So three of the four were good and this one's a little bit a little bit worse for wear for some reason. Okay. okay, so that's all done. Quick rinse off. Okay, now I'm not quite finished with that, but I'm going to switch attention over to these clips again since we were talking about them. I'm going to get all the rust off of them, all the dust. They're in pretty good shape. If they're not in good shape, these are cheap. Three, four bucks, get new ones. If you're buying your kit, see if it comes with them. It's great if it does. Yeah, okay. So both parts of that is, are now all clean. We're gonna lube those in a moment. Let's go back to the bracket again. It's drip dried now. These two parts here are called sliders. They're supposed to move freely. And these often end up seizing up. When you don't service your car on a regular basis, these seize up and very premature brake wear and uh, failure. It's a little rubber boot. You just want to push it back a little bit. I don't know if you saw that bit of grease squirt out of there. That's good. There's grease in there, which is why they haven't seized. Okay. So you can see it's covered in a, a special kind of grease, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Okay. We're going to wash that old grease out and put some new grease in there. Gonna let that air dry. 99% of it out just fine. Okay. So I, I'm doing one at a time just for the sake that I don't want to mix these two pins up. Sometimes they're not identical and you don't want to mix, mix them up. So. Okay, just wiping off the shaft here, checking it for pitting or rotting. It's, it's, it's all fine. The surface up there, which is exposed, is a bit rusty, but it doesn't matter. The main part here, the, the sliding shaft, is nice and clean. You'll notice too, if you look at these close enough, again, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the picture, but there's actually flat edges. I think three of them, maybe you can see it from the end better. There's some flat edges there, which allows the grease to have a kind of a pocket to help it stay moving in there. Okay, so nice and clean. Okay. Now, we have two types of... Uh, brake grease that we're going to use on this uh, vehicle. This one is specifically for the job we're doing right now. Okay, it's, uh, well, this one's act it's, it's probably the best one. This one's actually made for uh, extreme temperatures, ceramic brake, brake uh, linings. Um, this is good to like 2,000 degrees, something really ridiculous. 1,649 degrees Celsius, that's 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, uh, that's not going to melt, no matter how much you ride the brakes. Okay, in this case it's purple. A lot of brands are green, doesn't matter. It's a silicone based kind of grease. It's both a lubricant and it keeps water out. It's a water displacement. So we're going to put some of that right down inside the hole. Let's push that down in there. Okay. There's going to be some inside this boot. And just to make sure I'm totally thorough, I'm going to make sure it's all over this slider pin. 
I don't want this thing rusting. I don't want this thing sticking. Okay. okay we're going to just double check that we haven't put too much in there so that, that it can't move all the way in and out. It's free to move in and out. I give it a spin. Make sure that lube's all nicely spread around. Okay, we're gonna clean the little bit off that came out the outside edge. We, again, it's not gonna melt, but we don't want grease floating around in their brakes. Okay, so nice and smooth. Okay, notice by the way too, this pin has two flat edges. That'll be important later, because when you go to put it together, those edges have to line up properly with the bracket. Okay, so that one's done. We'll take a look at the other one. I don't think I mentioned, inspect the boot. If it's cracked, got to be replaced. Again, dirt cheap. Make sure you, you don't nickel and dime yourself to death and cost yourself hundreds of dollars extra later. Okay. See, this is not quite identical to the last one. This one's got a little rubber booty on the end. Can't honestly tell you what it's there for, but it's there. Toyota must have figured it's there for a reason, so we won't doubt their engineers. Set that aside. Okay, we're going to wash that out. Let that drip dry for a minute. Okay. Confirm that we got the grease out everywhere. Okay. Oops. Just a little bit left there. Hope we did good. Get our new silicone grease in there. Good. Cover our pin. Okay. Again, I didn't mention earlier, but if you look carefully at the at the tip of that, you see there's a small ridge there. That's going to fit in the in the edge of the boot. It's going to snap in place to create a seal. So when you push it in and you give it a little turn, it's going to seat properly so that water can't get into that boot. Okay, there we go. All done. We'll give it a final little rinse off. Make sure we don't have anything sticking out on the outside where it doesn't belong. Okay, now the other type of grease that I mentioned that we're going to be using is an anti-seize grease. Anti-seize grease is uh, exactly what its name says. It prevents things from, from sticking and seizing. I really like this copper type. It comes in silver as well. The silver one tends to stain your skin really bad. It's hard to, to wash off, whereas this doesn't seem to wash off so bad. And it seems to stay um, kind of wet much, much longer than the silver one does. Not sure why, but we're going to turn our attention back to those little slots. We're going to put a little bit of this anti-seize grease in these slots. We're going to wipe off the excess and this is going to be as a anti-corrosive so that we don't have rust buildup causing the pinching that we were talking about earlier. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, especially on the inside where the brake rotor is going to be turning, we don't want the grease there. Okay, make sure there's no excess anywhere. Okay, just a little bit, that's all it takes. Then we get our Nicely cleaned up brackets, they're going to go back on. They just clip in place, like that, make sure they're nice and snug. Oops, upside down, let's try it the right way. Okay, and nice, and, nice and snug, okay. Now the pads are going to be sitting in that slot. Yeah, like this. Okay. So it's going to sit in those grooves and it's got to be able to slide back and forth freely in there. Let me see if I can illustrate again. Okay, so it's going to be going into those grooves like that. All right. And I can already feel there's a bit of resistance there. It's not bad. I can easily move it with my fingers. But again, to prevent any future issues, we're going to put a little bit of anti seize grease on those tabs so that it can move freely later, okay? 
Uh, this brand comes with a new backing plate uh, or like a, a noise insulator. Okay. Um, some of them are physically attached, they're glued on. Some of them just hold on with little clips like this one, just holds on with little clips. Okay. And that's to stop the squealing noise. Okay. We can actually uh, improve its, its longevity by putting a little bit of that anti-seize grease on the back. I know a lot of people like to use that disc brake quiet product. It does the same sort of, uh, of job. I like this better. So I'm going to use the anti-seize. I'm just set that bracket down. Okay. So again, this is mostly as a preventative for corrosion. So these little parts don't rust away over the next couple of years. Okay, that little tab that's going to hold it on will tend to rust right in the corner and lose its ability to hold on. So snap that on. If you like the word Brembo showing through your wheels, you can leave it uncovered. If you don't care, you can put a little bit of anti-seize on the back as well. This will be in between the piston and the pad and again increases its longevity. Okay. Now you notice I'm doing a, a, a job, I'm trying to be very careful not to touch the actual braking surface. I'm going to put some lube on those tabs where they need to slide. That's the most important part. If you want to go a little stingy on this anti-seize grease, don't cut it short here. Just enough here. The rest is kind of optional, but that's important on those tabs. Okay, so that one, that one's prepared to go on. Okay, set it down, likewise with the other one. Okay, so for those of you who are more observant than the average bear, you might notice that there is not a little clip on these to squeal when your brake pads are worn out. This brand didn't come with new ones. The ones that I took off didn't have them on there, which is part of the reason why I got all the way down to metal to metal with no warning that it was about to wear out. Okay, if yours has those little squealers on there, bonus. Something to look for again when you're shopping, when you're picking your brand to brake, brake pad. See if it comes with that clip that makes the squealing noise. Okay, so both these pads are now prepared. Basically everything's ready to go back on. Again, one future preventative thing that uh, I hinted at earlier was this brake, um, the, the wheel hub surface. It's nice and clean as you can see. It's the way it's been for many years on this car. We're going to put a little anti-seize around the center so the brake rotor will come off in the future, no problem. We're going to put a little, little bit on the surface here, again as a anti-corrosive. Okay, don't go too crazy here on this one because as the wheel spins, it's going to try to fly outwards, and you don't want to get it all over the surface of the brake, the brake rotor. It won't actually land on the surface of the brake rotor. It'll go in the slots, the cooling slots in between. So it really isn't going to be an issue, but don't go nuts on it. Okay. So now it's time to reassemble. Okay. We take our nicely clean brake rotor. Now see, I got a spot on there from something. I don't know where it came from, but a little bit of diligence. Make sure we get that off. Okay. Never hurts to over inspect. All right. Everything else looks good. On it goes. Okay. All right. This brake rotor, as many brands do, it has two little holes here with threads in them. Those are to help you pull the rotor off in the future. If, uh, if the rotor's stuck and you can't get it off, screwing two bolts in there will help draw that rotor off. To make sure those threads don't rust away over the next four or five years, I'm going to again just put a little dab of anti-seize grease in there. God's gift to mechanics right there. Okay. And that's going to stop those threads from corroding away in the future. Okay. Wipe off the excess. There we go. All right, next thing on will be our uh, caliper bracket. Okay, that's gonna be going around here. Those two bolts that hold it on, we wanna inspect them, make sure they're nice and clean. Okay, they are. Again, just a tiny dab of anti-seize on the thread so we don't have problem in two or three years again next time we go to take them off. Okay. Okay, again, in double, triple inspect. See, there's a bit of excess grease there. I don't want that to touch the rotor. Okay, everything's nice and clean. Goes on.
two fingers slides right in there no problem no fighting with grease with properly greased bolts Okay, so they're on finger tight. Let's put them on properly. There is a proper torque spec for this. I don't know it off the top of my head. If you're very fussy, you can look it up and get make sure you have it absolutely right. I have not put a torque wrench on one of these for many years. I just do it by hand. I know pretty good how tight it needs to be. But I guess if we want to do it the right way, we put a torque wrench on this. Okay. Nope, good and tight. All right, next step is to put the pads in. Again, just confirming that there's no grease where it's not supposed to be. Looks nice. Now put our pads in. Okay. One goes in that bottom slot, one goes in the top slot. It okay. moves nice and freely. Okay. Likewise with the inside pad. There's a little excess on the side here, I'm just gonna wipe off. Matter of fact, that's too close to the braking surface for my liking, so a little bit of brake cleaner. Yeah, nice and clean. Okay, let that drip off a little bit. And in goes the bed. Okay, so there we go, our new pads are now in place. I'm going to spin that back and get a better look at it again. Okay. Looks a whole lot better than that thing, doesn't it? Okay. All right. Now again, I see a little excess grease here. We want to make sure nothing is going to give us trouble in the future. Okay, that looks fine. Next, we got to put our caliper back on. Now, because the old pads have worn out, the piston had to come up further and further and further to push those old pads against the rotor. So now we're going to have to push the piston back into the, the caliper, okay? So we just want to start by doing an inspection on the caliper, okay? That their rubber boot looks to be in good shape, okay? It does, okay? We might want to clean up some of the, the dust. Okay, then I'm going to Give the caliper a bit of a wash off. We take our hook off. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now I've got a special tool made for this job. Looks like this. And it goes inside the piston. And as you turn the screw thread, it's going to push the piston in. We'll see that in just a moment here. Now, if you don't have this tool, first of all, they're very inexpensive, okay? You can get them at any, any uh, car repair facility. But you could do this job with a C-clamp, just by pinching it from there. Even a big set of channel lock pliers could do it, but this just makes the job easy. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you see now that I, I've turned the thread far enough, the flat plate is going to push on these two ends of the, four of the caliper and the thread is going to push on the piston and it's going to push the piston in. Now, that piston is quite stiff. It should go in much, much easier than that. It makes me feel that this is a good chance this caliper is starting to seize up. So we may end up having to rebuild this caliper or replace it. Okay, so we're going to leave that for the time being. We'll, we'll edit in the other side. I'll push in the piston on the other side and uh, we'll take care of it from there. Okay, so this, this uh, piston should have moved in fairly easily. All right? The fact that it didn't means I may have discovered a, a problem with this car. Okay, the rebuilt caliper, by the way, is not terribly expensive. Um, 50, 60, 70 bucks, depending on the car, sometimes 100 or more. The old one, when you return it, you get money back. 
Okay. Rebuilding them is not exactly rocket science. You can do it yourself. I think the kits are typically $10 or $15. So if it's not too badly uh, uh, seized up, you can maybe free it up and rebuild it yourself, but that's another day's video. Okay. So I'm just going to stop it there. We'll add it in the other side when we get it done. Okay. Now, as we expected, we had a problem with this caliper. The piston, uh, as it comes out, a portion of the piston is exposed to uh, the elements. This rubber seal, uh, as you can obviously see, I pushed the piston out completely out of the caliper. The rubber seal would have been leaking and allowed moisture in there. And the part that's in behind that rubber boot has corroded quite a bit. So when we tried to push the piston back in, as the corroded part started to go into the caliper, it jammed. Okay. Had I continued to force it, I probably could have got it to go in, but these are definitely not going to be moving freely. And everything with brakes has to move freely, so this caliper needs a rebuild. Okay, so we've rebuilt the caliper. Okay, um, we had a kit here, so I just rebuilt it. And it's all, oh, let me show you. It's, it was removed, it's been all cleaned up. New piston pushed in, seal, okay. It's all the way back, so now they can go around that set of brake pads. Remember those flat sides I was telling you about on that slider pin? Okay, they have to line up with that on the on the caliper itself. Same with the one at the bottom. And then we can put our bolts back in. Okay, so put our bolt in there. Okay, so now obviously we still have the hydraulic line disconnected so since we've had to open the hydraulics we're going to have to bleed the system now okay normally you wouldn't have that line off and normally you wouldn't have to go through bleeding the the brakes as part of your normal brake service but in this case we're going to have to because we've had the system open i also like to recommend to everybody that you do change your brake fluid once a year every 25,000 kilometers or so uh, change the brake fluid Brake fluid is hydroscopic, which means it absorbs water. That's why you have to use it from a sealed container only, because it will literally suck the humidity out of the sky and absorb it into the fluid. And after time, that uh, brake fluid can't absorb enough anymore, and that water that's stuck in there is starting to rust the internal parts of your, your brake system, which is partly what you saw here. Okay. Um, this could have ended up being a, a failed brake somewhere down the line. At the very least, it could have been a lot more expensive repair. Okay, so change the brake fluid. It's about five or six bucks for a bottle of brake fluid. Get your, note, your, your handy neighbor or something to give you a hand. It's an easy do-it-yourself job. There's a million videos out there on how to bleed the brakes. So make sure that you, you do that. Okay, anytime you open this system, you have to bleed the brakes because there's air in there as soon as you open the system. Okay, thanks.